Well, hello there, Kurt. Hey, hey, Steve. How are you? Good morning, man. Good. Uh, I want to get into Hammered Saint because I know there's a big buzz going on on that on your new band right now around town. But I, before we do that, I was hoping we could go back in the past here a little bit. Perfect. Because you got a really good history. Um, so you, I know you grew up on the West Coast. I think mm -hmm. it was L.A. Whereabouts did you grow up? I grew up in the San Gabriel Valley, a little town out there called Duarte. It's uh, about 15 minutes east of Pasadena in the foothills. The other valley, you know, I was yeah. tell people, well, I grew up in San Gabriel Valley. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, the valley. I'm like, no, no, it's the other valley. The valley you never heard of. Yeah, I lived, nobody talks about. <laughs> I lived in the San Fernando Valley myself. Okay, so, cool. Yeah. <clears throat> Where were well, you out there? Uh, well, I first went to, when I first went to LA, I got there in 84, but I was living in the South Bay because I worked okay. for Enigma Records and we were located down in Torrance. Yep. So I was living in Hermosa. Oh, and yeah, then, cool. then um, when I moved back to LA the second time, I lived in the Studio City. Mm -hmm. And then in, and then I went to Marina Del Rey and then I went to Encino. So I went back and forth from the beach to the valley and Santa yeah. Monica too. So cool. I moved a lot, you know, I never owned yeah. out there. I rented. So, but I love, I love LA, man. Yeah. I, I always have. It's cool. I'm, I'm, you know, it's, uh, it's bittersweet for me in a way, you know, I still have family out there, but, uh, and I go out there from time to time, but I, I'm, you know, there's not a lot of reasons for me to go out there. I have some good friends out there, but uh, I don't miss it very much. You know, you don't miss it. <laughs> not not so much, man. I've, I've uh, my wife and I've really grown to love, uh, love Boston and, and being back here, you know, so. I always tell people my two favorite cities are Boston and LA. So, I mean, I, I lived, yeah. in, you know, I lived in New York City, too, which is pretty yeah. good, too. But They're pretty polar so, opposites. Of, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. But it's a it's good that you know if I could have a house here and a house there that'd be a perfect scenario. Yeah, I might take it for granted that I have people out there because I can go out there pretty easily, you know. So I'm just like, yeah, I can go out there. But anyway. did you did you grow up in a musical family? And and if not, when did you start listening to music? Uh, there was music around. I wouldn't say it was it wasn't cool music necessarily. You know, uh, my parents it, music was sort of just peripheral for them. You know, kind of wallpaper. Um, I think in like junior high, you know, I started really, I had a buddy who started turning on me, turning me on to, to different bands, like the who in particular, um, I listened to beat, I had Beatles records and stuff before that actually even going further back. Who am I kidding? I had all the kiss records when I was like, yes, man, you know, <laughs> that was probably the first one, honestly, man, you know, uh, kiss alive too, I think was the first record that i actually bought as a kid with birthday money or whatever you know and being very uh uh, uh entranced by <laughs> just the the photography just the album cover you know like diving into how that looked and playing it on my goofy little record player when i was a kid but so, I can see that would be movie rats. It's like Ace Frehley crossing Johnny Thunders almost, kind of your style, right? Pretty yeah, close. Yeah, I've I've been told that. That's those those names have been thrown at me. Yeah, about, I believe you know, it. Over the years. You played with Greg Allen, so that would yep. be, we'll, we're going to talk about that in a minute. Yep. So so it was like, uh, did you get into punk at an early age, or was it all the classic rock and? You know, it was because that was kind of going on at the same time. Yeah, it was it was there. It wasn't. It wasn't so weird. I remember being in even even like really young, like like sixth grade, and you'd hear. <clears throat> I think they just probably re reissued Dirty Deeds, you know, ACDC. So I'd hear you'd hear Dirty Deeds on the radio, and then you'd hear Whip It. So Evo, yeah, you know, it was kind of like it. It it wasn't like oh, this is one thing and this is another. It's just it was happening at the same time, kind of. But like, I think for punk, that probably was a you know maybe the first year in high school I started hearing the Ramones, and I got that. Uh, you know, never mind the bollocks. I was just talking to my buddy the other day. Like, I still have the cassette that I bought when I was a kid, you know, and I remember putting that on my my Walkman, <laughs> you know, and going like, wow, I never heard anything like this before. This is really damn cool, you know. So I was. So I you was, were mixing it up pretty good. Yeah, I've always been. I always like a lot, a lot of different different music. I think even as a as a young kid, you know, I just liked what I liked, you know, and and. Uh, yeah, so when when did you start playing? Was guitar your first instrument? No, I I started playing. I picked up a bass when I was thirteen. Bass. Buddy, 
Yeah, this buddy of mine who um, got me, you know, turned me on to the Who in junior high. Uh, you know, I think he like went and saw Quadrophenia, and he had he had buddy or his family was also into the Who, and he's like, "We just start a band. I got guitars. You should get a bass." I'm like, "Okay, well." I, you know, I think I went to the Azusa swap meet out there and managed to finagle this bass when I was 13 and this giant acoustic amplifier, you know, like a 13 year old kid with a, a 300 watt amplifier in my bedroom <laughs> and the neighbors were not impressed. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you play bass for a long time before yeah. you switched over to guitar? Yeah, I played bass for a good 10 years before uh, I played bass up until B movie rats really. Um, so yeah, I, I that was sort of my music foundation was playing bass, which I kind of always have, have felt like that has uh, my approach might be a little different because of that. You know what I mean? As a guitar player, um, I think it's kind of cool to learn the bass before you learn the guitar. Actually, yeah, I really love groove. You know, I, I like pocket playing and really getting into that groove. And and uh, I don't think that that's a thing guitar players are, are first sort of drawn to. You know, right when they're learning stuff you know they, everybody wants to play flash and leads and stuff and i was always kind of like where's the pocket man you know <laughs> so so, so the bands that you played in before b movie rats were any of them notable bands did you do anything gigs recordings anything i played a bunch with different <laughs> guys and uh actually some of the guys who were in in b movie rats uh were in some of those earlier incarnations of bands but i mean we never re really recorded anything I think I did one one single with with a band with with a few guys, but B Movie Rats was like the the first real band that I started really busting my butt in. You know, um, everything before that was very local, and uh, you know, I think by the time the Rats came around, I'd gone through a lot of things. Like I I got married when I was really young. I got married when I was like twenty two, and of course got divorced soon after. You know, so I was right, going through right. that, and I was like. And the rat started like right then. And I was like, I'm going on the road, man. I, I just, this is what I'm going to do. I got to get out of here. So it was uh, certainly an impetus to get, uh, get things moving, you know, and we did, you know, we worked really hard. Yeah. Well, you got a pretty big discography with, with uh, the B movie rats. I mean, did you guys start playing around the LA? It was a it, pretty much a nineties to early 2000 band. Is yeah. that accurate? Yep. For sure. Um, did you play, I mean, what, what kind of venues were you playing out there in LA before you hit the road? I mean, you name it, you know, we, we, we played all of them. We played, I mean, earlier on, you know, mostly the smaller ones, but I mean, Bar Deluxe, Raji's, uh, um, Raji's. Al's, Al's Bar, of course, you know, actually the Rats never played Raji. Raji's <laughs> already closed by then, but I played Raji's with some of the earlier bands. Uh, what else was out there? I mean. God, I can't even remember now. Did you, you know? do like the whiskey and the true? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. What about the country club? That was gone. It wasn't gone, but we never played. There was a pretty pretty big room, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was. Um, yeah, I used to go there a lot because um, some of the bands I worked with were bigger and could play there. You know, mm -hmm. at, at labels. I used to like that. I used to like that. That receipt. It was in receipt, I believe. Yeah. Country club. So. Um, so when did you like, did you get a deal like, like these, you were on independent labels. Was it, was it good enough for you to like get in a van and go on tour and didn't, and what kind of so, tours did you do? So what the way it went down, I mean, we, we started playing around quite a bit and we knew some of the, some of the guys around who were putting records out like Tom, oh, pardon me one quick, click something out there. Uh, Tom at um, deadbeat records. Right. He was on our radar and he'd come out to shows and stuff. But honestly, right from the beginning, we had we had our the very first singer was in the band for about a year before uh, Derek Christensen came on to be the, you know, the the Me, singer yeah. in the Beat Movie Rats. But we were like very much of the DIY mindset of like, we're not waiting for anybody. <clears throat> and this was the day when you didn't have to wait a year to put a seven inch out. A seven inch was a viable thing that bands could put out pretty easily you know it wasn't a ton of money and you could you know you could put a, a record out in a couple months it, it wasn't this what it is now where it's like oh you're on a maybe in a year you'll have your vinyl so we just decided to put out we put out a four song ep like in 96 i think soul fucker right 
That's right. Yeah. That kind of put you guys on the map early on. Well, it, it opened some doors for us because we, we were just like, okay, we've got this record. Let's go on the road. Knowing nothing. I mean, we just started cold calling people and um, made it out to Texas. And that's where we met uh, Mike Maraconda in Austin playing with the Sons of Hercules down there. And that, uh, that really kind of formed a, you know, Mike's still a, a great friend of mine to this day. And I, I, I um, it, it opened a lot of doors for us, you know, cause he'd been working with Crypt. He was in, he was in the raunch hands and uh, he was kind of a hero to us. Even when we met him, you know, it was like, Oh, Mike Maricon is here. I'm like, wow, really? You know, it was, it was kind of neat. Um, and by the time, so we put out that record. I think we got back. We still didn't have anything, a, a, a you know, a deal with any labels. I think we put out one other single on our own. And I remember sitting in, in the kitchen of my apartment with my, my, you know, the bass player, Billy and the rats and, uh, Bill Graves, like, Bill Graves. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like, damn, what are we going to do, man? Like, we're just going to put out another thing on our own, you know? And we're like, yeah, let's do it. And literally that night, Tommy deadbeat gave it, gave us a call, Tom Spencer. Hey, I want to work with you guys and let's do some stuff. So nice. that kind of kicked that off. So there was a, there was a, a point over like six months where we we're just like, we had like three to three or four different seven inches coming out at the same time, almost, you know? <laughs> which gave us some, some, some stuff to work with and got us some, some, re, you know, reviews in uh flip side and maximum rock and roll and a lot of the, the older zines that were around, you know, back when there were zines, you know? Yeah. I like all those, ma- all those magazines. Uh, I know on one of the singles you guys covered rock and roll queen, one of my favorite songs, uh, yep. Mott the Hoople, <laughs> yep. which seems to be more popular now than it ever was. Cause I've seen it in a couple TV shows on right? Netflix and stuff. Yeah. And I was like, ah. rock and roll queen. It's I such a it was, great, such a know, great riff, man. I got to meet Ian Hunter a couple of times. He's one Did of you? my idols. So, you know, yeah, man. I always catch when someone's doing something with the, with Mott or something. Yeah, man. Yeah. No, so you, a- big fan yeah so, so you guys not. you guys had a couple records but then they were reissued later with the with the singles on them is that what happened because i see four albums but two of them were actually studio albums right yeah i'm trying to even think well there were there were there were there was the deadbeat lp there was a junk lp there was a live lp that that uh, jim live before put out which is kind of a weird thing but it did come out um, and then there was a this weird comp that came out on uh, 20 Stone Blatt was the English label that was kind of a hodgepodge of, of our stuff. It wasn't necessarily a singles thing and it was it was a weird situation. But uh, but yeah, that did come out. That was never to us. It wasn't an official release. It was kind of just put out in the UK and gave us a reason to get over there, you know. Oh, but, so you uh, toured the UK with B, with B Movie Rats. We did a few shows in the UK. We we did way more in Europe. You know, I think I've played, you know, four times total in in London, in England. You know, nice versus Europe, where you know we toured our asses off in Europe, man. Uh, England, really? kind of weird to get into. You know, um, yeah, we we had some good shows in in London uh, with Texas Terry. I don't know if you remember Texas. Oh Terry. yeah, of course. Yeah. She still makes appearances every now and then. She's still she's still around, right? She's in Berlin. She's been in Berlin for a long time. Yeah, yep. I see her name come up every now and then. I think she may have been in L.A. not too long ago because a bunch of younger rock women were in a photo with her that I saw from not yep. too long ago because she's idolized by a lot of the younger women. Yeah, as as should be. I mean, she was, yeah. you know, she's fantastic. You know, the the Rats did a, we did a, I, we played with Terry so many times. I mean, in L.A. and <clears throat> I can't remember if we ever met them on the road anywhere in the states probably you know because in the 90s everybody was on the road man and you would just <clears throat> pull into different towns be like oh cool we're playing with with these guys and you know like friends of ours from wherever but i think the last time i saw terry was probably texas terry was probably in spain because we did a bunch of shows in spain with them and um uh, no, actually, the last one was in London. We'd done those shows in Spain, and right, and the last show was in in London at the uh, uh, Underground in Camden, um, and that was two thousand two. So, so there you go. I'm sure time. that you and I were on the same on the Sunset Strip or somewhere at the same time because I was Probably. at AM Records in the '90s on Sunset and La Brea. Exactly. So I was like, I'm sure. I don't think I ever saw B Movie Rats. I knew about the band, but for some reason, I never caught you guys. Yep. Probably just timing or work or whatever. 
Um, when was it that you decided that it was time to move away from LA and move to Boston? What, what inspired you to do that? Well, the, so the B movie rat split up in, in 2002 after our last European tour. And, uh, <clears throat> I started doing some guitar repair work. I started learning guitar repair and and, and doing that with uh, my buddy, Mike De Temple out in California, out in LA, out in, uh, where the hell is he? Sherman Oaks. Sherman Oaks. <clears throat> oh, know Sherman. it well. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon me. And uh, I don't know, my wife Annette and I, we started looking around. We wanted to try to buy a place and it was getting more and more difficult <clears throat> in LA anywhere, even back then. And I got it in my head that I wanted to go to school or I, I was kicking around, you know, like, oh, I never went to college. You know, I wonder what that would be like. You know, I was probably, I was 35, I think, at the time. And I'd been, a, you know, I'd worked in the film industry for a long time doing, as a fabricator, you know, work with my hands. So I was like, oh, it might be kind of cool to go to school and like maybe learn how to play the guitar for real or <laughs> study music, you know. Uh, so I, my wife was like, you should apply to Berkeley, like see what happens, you know. I didn't know you went to Berkeley. Wow. Yeah, so, so I did, and I applied, and they they gave me some some money to come back here, and uh, you know we didn't we didn't move back here with the intention necessarily to stay, but um, we did we we came back and kind of fell in love with it. We, not kind of we did fell in love with uh, Boston. So where did, where did you end up getting a place? We started in, in we we're in brookline but now we've been in in roslindale now for roslindale yeah for a good well since we moved out here in 05 so we've been here since oh oh six i mean oh seven yeah it's yeah. probably upgraded a little since you've been here well actually it would the upgrade took place more probably before you got here but roslindale is not a bad place to live it's awesome. We yeah. love it. Man. I just love it. We, you know, I don't know if you've been to the square root, but the square root's like a mile, not even a mile from here. You know, I got to go there. I know you're, didn't the guys in the high end, don't they run that joint? Yeah. Anthony, the bass player owns, right. owns square root. Yeah. We'll get into those guys in a yeah. second. Cause I know you play with them. Uh, what I was curious about was I know that I got to know you via a lot of being on a lot of group emails and things. Cause I was trying to help Greg out. Right. Yeah. And, I um, one thing I'll say about Greg Allen is I've known Greg for a long time and you got to be good if you play with Greg Allen, because he can be very, you know, uh, Greg, if you're listening, I mean this in the <laughs> kindest way possible. <laughs> he can be neurotic and he can be like overbearing at times because he's looking for perfection and you can't really knock someone for that. And that's oh, why yeah, Greg is a good friend of mine. And I love the guy. Yep. So when you ended up in his band with Vinny and those other guys, Yep. The band sounded great. Was that your first band that you got into in Boston? Um, I think it was the first band I, I hung around in. Yeah. Like I, French I, religion we're talking about. For the yeah. Listeners. Yeah. I mean, I played with Greg for three years, three, almost four years, three or four years, something like that. Um, I think that's right. I don't know, man. It all kind of all starts to blend <laughs> together after a while, but it was, it was, it was several years. Um, I'd done some playing with Kenny Chambers from from oh, yeah. It's I did I did a, a show with him and like I would do little projects like that, you know. Wow, but, I didn't know that. I love Kenny Chambers. He's one of the the real unsung heroes, if you ask me. <laughs> yeah, we we rehearsed a set and did one show at TT's, and then I was in the middle of grad school at the time, and and I was just like, man, I can't do a band right now. But I think I was out of grad school for a year, and then I I joined up with Greg, you know, so. Okay, I missed something important here. So you went to Berkeley and then you went to grad school? Yeah, I went up to uh, uh, Portland, University of Southern Maine, and got a master's degree in jazz studies up there. Jazz studies? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. You're a real aficionado. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I mean, Lou always calls you, he has a nickname for you. Uh, well, I know you go by the guitar czar, but he said refer to you as something else i'm talking he calls about me the guitar doctor yeah the guitar doctor there you go because <laughs> i repair them that's that's my gig you know but but uh yeah i mean i've, so, I've been in music forever like yeah. fully on into it you know so you you played that gig with kenny and was it soon thereafter that you hooked up with greg allen i think well no wait a minute now there's probably another i think there was another project after that uh with bruno from uh the high end we had a band for a little bit with um, Josh Pickering. You know, Josh Pickering. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Josh was right. playing drums. 
I think we did that for about a year. And then after that, I started playing with Greg. So 2013, I think it was somewhere around there. Yeah, that's right. Because, you know, somebody just posted a picture of the month of that month of Hoople reunion in London with Mick Ralphs and over and Watts. And I went to that show and I remember telling Greg, I'm going to London to see Mott. And he was you just did? Like, fuck you, man. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. You and Greg right. must have had a lot to talk about because, you know, he, he, he's, you know, played with Jerry Nolan, you know, mm -hmm. Jerry Nolan, the profilers. And he's always been kind of like, like I, a lot of, sometimes he reminds me of Lou Reed, the way he sings. And other yep. times it's the total dolls influence. Seems like a good place for a guy that was in the B movie rats to end up. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was, uh, all the influences were there and we were speaking the same language, you know, it wasn't, uh, you know, which is not something to take for granted. You know, I mean, it's it's I want to be able to talk to people about references and say, oh, yeah, I, you know, I'm thinking about something like from, you know, love it to death or I, I want to hear a riff that sounds something like, you know, the first couple of Blue Oyster cult records or something, you know, and somebody doesn't just have this giant question mark over there going, what the hell are you talking about? Greg mm -hmm. knows all those points. You know, he's a he's a big music fan. I mean, he's he's. He's a, I mean, he loves music, you know. I uh, imagine you're a fan of guys like Steve Hunter and Dick Wagner and oh, those yeah, kind man. of guys too, right? Totally, totally yeah. yeah, absolutely. I've been going through a little uh, Lou Reed resurgence myself lately. Not that Lou ever left me, but, you know, yep. uh, when you pay a lot of attention to Lou, man, wow. What, totally. a, what a talent. So um, would you would you take, the, the the whole overall experience with fringe religion not knowing how things ended or whatever was it a good experience for you in general absolutely man yeah we we played some great shows and uh you know i consider greg to be a great friend of mine man and, you know we had uh i mean we went down to new york a few times played with um played with walter lure and the waldos a couple oh, of yeah times. right some of, those, some of those thunders tributes and uh i met a lot of people here you know playing with greg um between my business, you know, doing repair work and <clears throat> playing with Greg, I've met, met so many people here in Boston. It's it's uh, it's cool because it felt like it kind of took me a long time to feel like I was part of something here, you know. But, I mean, I do now. But even by the time I met Greg, I was starting to, like, meet people. I mean, we played with the real kids, the Nervous Eaters. And that, for me, that was huge, man. I was like, these are some of my favorite bands, you know. These are bands here that I think people take for granted. But from being from L.A., like, those names were I mean, oh real yeah, kids, real kids, man. Are you kidding yeah. me? You know, <laughs> yeah, the real kids. That's another band that really deserves way more credit. Yep, for what yep. they what they did. Um, so, um, the Machines, uh, you and Bill from B Movie Rats. Mm -hmm. You guys, what did you somehow get recruited to go to Europe? So. I mean, how did that all come together? Because I know that you went to Europe probably more than once with them, it's right? Been, we've done three tours now. Three. Um, yeah. So Ross Kirsten, who was just here this weekend, <clears throat> was the singer in a band called LaDonna's from Denver. Right. And they were on uh, they were on Scooch Pooch, which was, was like a sub of Epitaph or whatever in the 90s. And um, we, they, we, we played with them all over the place in the States back in the 90s. And... Uh, by the you know 2000s early 2000s or whatever i kind of lost touch with rossi but he moved to south africa oh he's in europe and then he moved to south africa and we'd touch base online here and there but at one point he was like he started touring with the band machines in europe for quite a while i mean they did a number of tours and then he didn't do anything for a while and then out of the blue it's kind of like hey would you be interested in coming to europe you know and 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 doing this and i was like well well, hell yeah, I would, you know, I hadn't been on the road in 15 years or something, you know, and uh, what was funny, though, is I had I'd kind of said, yeah, you know, I need to know what the money situation is a little bit first, though. And so he took it like I wasn't interested. And then he had recruited Billy, who I'd done every tour in my life with, who was living in uh, he he lives in um, uh, Cyprus, you know, in, oh, in the he does? Wow. yeah, everyone's from all over, man. And I get a thing. I get a text from him. From Billy, hey, I'm going on road with with Ross and the Machines, man. And I'm like, the fuck, man. Like, I why I want to go, you know. So I, <laughs> I called up Ross. I'm like, I'm going, man. What are you talking about? Billy's going, but I'm not going. So 
we did and we had um tom cook who was the drummer in the magnolias uh playing okay drums. yeah on that first tour and it went really well you know we we, we did really well over there and uh We've gone back three times with three different lineups. So um, the last lineup was was really strong. And uh, that was not too long ago. Yeah. In fact, I think when we had first started talking about doing do getting together like this was right before that was going to happen. And that was in April or May of, of last year. And uh is this what you think you'll be going doing again? Are you going to play oh, with yeah. machines again? Yeah. Oh yeah, we've got a we've got a seven song, uh, you know, record being worked on right now in France, uh, recorded in L.A., recorded here, and then sent over to uh, Saint Etienne in France. Our buddies, uh, my buddy Eve uh, Greenman Prez is uh, mixing it over there for us. So we're, I mean, this week we should have mixes. So. But we need a label and we need a new booking agent over there. And we'll get back over there, though. Before we talk about the great solo record that I really like that you put out on Rumbar, The High End. You were mm -hmm. with The High End for a, for a fairly long time as well, weren't you? Seven years, man. Yeah. Seven years. Wow. Seven years, man. That's my that's my, that's my my expiration date on a band, man. I'm, I, I, <laughs> I, B-Movie Rats was seven years. High End, seven years. Like, no I'm, way. Really? Time to do other things, man. Yeah. You didn't last seven <laughs> years with Greg Allen, though. No, I didn't. I didn't last seven with Greg, man. Well, three and a half, three and a half years is like seven years with Greg. Man. <laughs> I hope Greg's listening. Yeah, uh, man, yeah, he knows. He knows. He'll get a kick out of this. Okay, um, so, I mean, did you did you guys like put a lot of stuff out with the high end? That's one of your um, bands. I'm not as familiar with, unfortunately. You know, we, we did, we did a we did an EP. We did a few single releases, uh, like CD releases, but the real the real release was when lou decided to put it out on rumbar we asked lou if he would you know was interested and he was and he did a great job with it um but we you know we, we weren't the output wasn't there the same as it was with with some of my other bands or some of my other projects you know but we worked hard and and we worked hard at the music which i did really appreciate you know because they were all very good musicians and uh i got to you know, really work on getting some of those musical ideas out with those guys because they could kind of handle anything that any of us would throw into the band, you know. Um, it was a great band. I really, I really liked being in that band a lot, you know. Seems like you're the kind of guy that would set a pretty high, pretty high bar as far as musicianship goes with all the people you play with, and plus you're the professor of, of the doctor, yeah, the guitar but you doctor. Know, the thing about that though is, you know, I, I, I'm not. I'm not a like cork sniffing about that. And I certainly don't have an attitude. I mean, I, ex I expect people to be able to, to play, but to me, it's more about, um, it's more about the heart and the the sort of soul that somebody puts into it. You know what I mean? And, and has, yeah. the, uh, has the passion, man, you know, I don't give a shit if somebody knows what, a, what kind of chord this or that is, if, if they can play their ass off and, uh, you know, really have the drive and are hungry. That's, that's what I'm, that's what turns me on, you know, that's what, I mean, we'll, we'll talk about it. I mean, that's what I'm so fired up about hammered saint. Cause they're like, they're hungry, man. They want to, they want to do stuff. And I, I do too still. Yeah. And we're also going to talk about how disappointed I was that I went to the <laughs> middle East the other night and you too. guys had to cancel, but we'll talk about that in a minute, but we can't skip your solo record because I fucking love that record. Awesome. Thank you, man. Um, scraping by on the rope of redemption the hope of redemption hope for what did i say the first time rope, the rope of redemption no it's just the hope of redemption yeah. <laughs> it scraping, might be a rope scraping by on the hope of redemption what, what were you thinking when you came up with that title man i don't know uh <laughs> you know just i, I think it's just a way of saying you know you, you you kind of bust your ass for years and you're you're hoping something comes out of it you know uh in a nutshell you know i, I mean this is a five song 22 minute uh record and uh, i think you nailed it 
Um, I really like the riff in Blood Gumbo. That's a very dark song. <laughs> uh, the song I got to talk to you about, though, and I, I think you guys ended up picking this as the single, is Take Me to Lost Cities. Mm. It's like another guitar-driven, heavy guitar-driven rack. It's definitely my favorite. You seem to be on some sort of a journey in search of something. What's exactly going on with that song, with the lyric content? You know... My the way I write lyrics is not. Uh, I don't want to say I don't put a lot of of uh, forethought into it, but a lot of times, I'm just trying to evoke a feeling more than like tell a story. You know, to, maybe to a fault because you know I have friends who are songwriters who say, "Well, that's not songwriting. That's just you know splashing a bunch of shit around." You know, but um, I've always liked you know writers like you know, like what Bowie would do, or, or it was just, it was just sort of like flashes of imagery, you know, and I think there's a bit of a, of a theme going on in that tune, but, uh, you know, it, it, I don't, I don't know if I want to get really deep into like what sort of philosophical so, philosophical so you, meaning there is to it. I, I, I like to leave those things up to people who are listening. Cause I, I don't want to, if somebody has an idea of what they think it's about, then, then that's what it's about for them, you know? So your lyrical content's not coming from an emotional place. It's more coming from a vibe kind of thing of what you, with, with the music. I mean, well, is that no, accurate? No, I, it, I would say it is coming from an emotional place, but it is evoked by the vibe of the music. You know, I mean, it, I'm not, I am putting down what I'm feeling there, you know, for sure. Um, but there's no meaning behind the song because you seem to be in search of something with the lost city. And I was trying to figure out what exactly you were searching for. Well, aren't, aren't we all in search? Is, of it, something? is this is this a deep question or what? It, I, well, it is. I mean, aren't we all in search of something? I mean, you yeah, know, we are. And, and yeah. maybe maybe you you maybe when you f supposedly find that thing, it's not really what you thought it was that you were looking for in the first place, you know? It's the lost city. You get there and there's nothing there, maybe, you know. Were you happy with uh, the way the reception for the reception you got for the solo? Right? I know it hasn't been out that long. I mean, well, it's so been the, a year, I guess. It's been a little bit longer than that, but the, it's been a couple of years. The funny thing about that recording is. Mm -hmm. So when did I do this? You did I it with your drummer, right? In his in his house or something. So I recorded that before I even played with Greg. So I, I recorded that record in 2012 or 13. Oh, I didn't realize that. It's okay. Old, it was an old, it, it was, it was songs that I'd had and I was kind of in between stuff. And I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to start writing and seeing what, see what happens here, you know? And I started demoing things. And I think I joined Greg right around the time I was compiling that stuff. And I recorded it. I, I just got uh, a drummer, a buddy of mine, Andrew Stern, who's a fantastic guitar player in town and a great friend, uh, turned me on to Jared Seabrook, who played drums on that. I hope I'm getting that right. Fuck. Yeah, it is. But it was very much a session. Like, he came in, we rehearsed it. You know, I threw him a few bucks, and and I did everything else. But it was recorded in um, just local, locally over here, you know. So it was um, more of a project than a band is what you're it saying. It was a, totally a project. Yeah, yeah, I had these tunes, and I, I I played bass on them. I played guitars, and I sang on it all, you know. And uh, I think I put it on, you know, Facebook or, or, or Bandcamp or whatever the hell, and a couple people listened to it, you know. And I was like, okay, whatever. When the high-end decided, when, when Lou decided to put the high-end stuff out a couple years ago, I was just fishing through my my you know, stuff on my computer, stuff I had compiled. And I was like, hi, I got these songs. I wonder if, you know, I still think they're cool songs. I wonder if anybody be into it. And I just sent them to Lou, like, Lou, what do you think of this? Like, do you want to do anything with this? Or should I just like can it? He was like, oh, I love it, man. Let's, let's, let's put it out, you know? Nice. Uh, and he did. And I had no expectations whatsoever. I was just like, it's this thing I've been sitting on for 12 years, man, you know? And, and uh, he put it out and, um, you know, I started getting a lot of internet plays from it and and people responding to it. And I was, I was pretty blown away. I was actually, it was pretty exciting because I was like, I, I like it. I like it. I think everybody cared, you know? Uh, I, think, so what, I, I think it's great, man. Seriously. Thank you. Thank you. It's, I wouldn't say the, the funny thing about it is that, I, you know, talking about, I'm not sure it, 
it really reflects where I'm at now, which is kind of, you know, I mean, 12 years, 10, 10 years is a pretty good chunk of time. And yeah. You, know, you go through a lot of different things in that amount of time. So I'm, I'm not even musically, I'm not really sure that that's where I'm at right now. You know, I'm in a pretty different place right now, but it is a snapshot of where I was for, for sure, you know, but I, even the other day I got a, a, it's still getting played in Europe. Like somebody sent me a chart of it, you know, it's been, it's been two or three years, I think. So I, I mean, didn't realize it was out that long. <laughs> Yeah, it's been out a couple of years. I think it was before. Uh, it says 2021 on it, so I figured it that, was about, yeah. Is that one? Okay, well, there you go then. I, my my sense of time <laughs> maybe is <laughs> exaggerated one way or the other, man. I don't know. So um, now you're in a band that, from the moment I heard about it, because, you know, a lot of people were disappointed that the gala split up so when you hear that the singer of the gala is in a new band everyone's like oh whoa what's this you know mm -hmm. hammered saint we're talking about and you haven't been in, this is a brand new project so why don't you tell us about how this all came together and how you get ended up getting involved with it so i split from the i, I left the high end uh what was it september maybe august or september last year and i think andy Andy Excuse from yes. Hammer Saint had just parted ways with Kid Gulliver, like within the same week that I had split the high end. And he pretty, and I had talked with Andy and I'd seen him play. And I was just like, the guy's an amazing bass player, you know? And I was just like, him and I could do something, you know? And so there was a bit of a, a, a um, serendipity when he emailed me. It was like, hey, I'm doing this thing you know, would you be interested? And I was like, I've been thinking of reaching out to you, but I just split the high end. I had gigs in LA booked with Moshines and a recording project out there. And I'm like, dude, I, I, I need to not be in a band for, for a, a while, for a little bit. I need a breath, man. I need, cause I was seven years with the high end and I didn't want to be in a band right away. Another band other than the Moshines. And, um, uh, I came home from, from LA. I had to have surgery, which is another reason I was like, Andy, I can't do anything. I had ankle surgery. So then it's a giant, stupid boot for a couple months. And um, even then I was like, ah, I'm not sure I'm ready to play, you know? And, and then I, I don't know, one night I was just like, what, what the fuck am I waiting for? Like, just, I know I'm not going to be able to sit on my ass and do nothing, you know? Um, so I called Andy. I'm like, you guys still looking, you know? And he's like, yeah, we, we definitely are looking. And so I was like, well, let's check it out. You know, he's like, we got a couple shows booked. Would you commit to them? I'm like, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll do the shows. Let's, let's approach this. Like um, I'm agreeing to do a couple shows and we'll see how we all right. jive on stage. You know I mean? That was more important to me almost than what was going to go on in the rehearsal studio. I was, I was like, I want to see how we do live, you know? And uh, we rehearsed for maybe a month or so and, and got the tunes together, which was a lot of covers and, and a few, uh, um originals and did that first show at the midway and it was fantastic man we had a lot of great response uh i had a blast they were rocking on stage emily and i i think like really hit it off on stage we had sort of a like right away we were playing off of each other and it felt natural you know it felt really cool and uh she's a great front person yeah without a doubt she, she is and she's into it, you know. Unpredictable she's, too, you know. She's into the music and the art aspect of it, you know. She she's um, she's the real deal, you know. She um, I hadn't really known her before. We spoke a few times, but you know, just getting to know her over the past couple months, I really appreciate all of them. Uh, you know, Andy and and Mark and as well. Like they're all they're all driven to do I, stuff. I used to see Andy a lot when he was in the Black Mosettes. Yeah, which was a band probably around 2009 or 10. Mm -hmm. And before I moved away, uh, I was li I've been I move a lot <laughs> going back and forth to different states. But uh, before I moved, I saw them a lot and they were really good. And he, he is a great bass player. Yeah. So, you know, I went to see you guys on Friday night at the Middle East, but you weren't there. Yeah. <laughs> Saturday night. It was Saturday, Saturday night. But, yeah. you know, uh, ne neither was Tiger Bomb. But you know what? For anyone that was there, and I know this doesn't really relate to you, but it kind of does. It was a great night because um, Freeloader was excellent. And then um, um, 
Oh my God, I'm losing my my train of thought here. Mark Mark Bell was was spinning tunes. Oh yeah, Mark was there, you know. And then, um, oh, I I know I I hate when this happens when I totally forget and I see the the band and the guy's face in front of me and I can't remember who the band was. But they came in at the last minute and filled in. It was really it was oh, like really. So they good. got another band. Yes, they did. And um, I wish there was a way. Uh, I don't know. Tiana, who, help me out. <laughs> I haven't heard who did that. Yeah, I was curious. I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that happened, man, because I felt bad about that. You know, we all felt bad. Yeah, the we show the show went on. Good the show went on, and um, um, I'll think of it. But anyway, so what are your plans with Armored Saint? Armored Saint. Armored Saint. I knew I was going to do that. I knew somebody I was going to do that. Somebody yeah, there's, else a, there's a metal band called Armored Saint. Yeah, Tony just... Savarino sent me a message the other day like, so how is the gig with Armored Saint going? <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you when I'm on tour with them next time, you know, in Germany or wherever they're playing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's funny. But um, so you guys are probably, you know, I saw some videos online. It's like, seems like it's going to be like old school, you know, punk kind of sounding. Is that it is. You... But there's some different stuff going on, man. We we there's a lot of garage, but we're doing like some LA punk stuff. But I don't know. You know, I feel like it takes a good. I was I was telling the band. I feel like it takes a good year for a band to really like kind of figure out what what they're actually doing. I mean, maybe this is moving a little bit faster, but before people like really start to gel with each other and decide like this is kind of the direction. But I'll tell you, we just recorded uh, three tunes up with um um richard marr galaxy park oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah richard's a good friend of mine that's, yeah. that's definitely two weeks ago what was it last last weekend anyway it's getting mixed we've got rough mixes now but uh it's sounding killer man I, I i'm i'm very excited about it and i've i've you know we're gonna figure out what to do with it but uh you know we, we did two originals and a cover um so yeah i mean that's 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 going to happen. I'm going to, I want to get it in my hot hands and get it over to some people I know in Europe and, and uh, see if I can see what we can do with it. You know, what did you guys cover? We cover um, um, nothing means nothing by the alley cats. Oh, nice. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Yep. A little bit of obscure. That's cool. Yeah. It's funny. Cause I, you know, the blocks in our set right now, it's like, there's this, we we've got like this, old school like la punk rock kind of segment we're doing like alley cats gun club avengers and then we're doing like you know 60s garage punk you know like sonics and and things like that you know or jack the ripper and uh so i don't know somewhere in the middle of all that we'll figure out what our sound is and <laughs> and run with it you know cool man but well, i'm digging good. uh it's the first band since the first <laughs> incarnation of the b-movie rats where i've been the guitar player and i'm digging it so much man i'm I'm really enjoying having the freedom just to be the guitar player you know playing with with in a two guitar band is great and i love the interplay but for a long time i kind of missed just that freedom of just being able to just go you know so it's it's pretty cool well that's awesome man and I'm glad that you found a band like that because um, I, I know the buzz is already happening. <laughs> Seems like it. Yeah. Yeah. People are talking about it. Which yeah. Is cool. It's one of those, you know, you got some good people in the band with you that have been around and like, the, like I mentioned the gala, you know, Emily's old band, there was a huge buzz on them, you know? Yeah. Yep. And uh, I, I, I never got to see the band because I was living in Pittsburgh. Ah. And when I heard about it, I was, I watched a lot of videos. My friend Alvin Long used to send mm -hmm. me videos and say, you would love this band. Yeah. And yeah. I found out they, broke up during the pandemic which sure happened to a lot of people yeah 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 uh before i go though i wanted to mention you know frank meyer huh. from the uh street walking cheetahs mm -hmm. uh he was on my show and he mentioned you on the show and said that you were the one he uh that you introduced him to lou and he ended up signing a deal at rumbar yeah so you're an anr guy too and you didn't even realize it <laughs> yeah yeah i got my fingers in all kinds of places man did you, know? you and frank know each other for a long time i imagine you probably did right oh man yeah i've known frank since we've known a, we've known each other a long time we've toured together we played a bunch of we played a lot a lot of shows together man um yeah he's an old friend for sure 
Uh, I didn't. I missed him last time I was out in L.A. We we did a couple shows, and he he had he was. I know he had just gotten engaged, and I think he had prior commitments in regards to that. Um, so I didn't get to see him that, but we did touch base. Um, yeah, I'm hoping to get back out there soon with the Moshines and maybe do a show with them or or nice. one, one of his fans, you know. But I've I've known the guys in the Cheetahs for a long time as well. Dino Everett. I mean, I've, he Dino actually. We I played a show with Dino out there. Um, he's a great guy and a great bass player as well uh what's what's his band um the amazing swagger is that is that right the the they're also on rumbar yeah oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. we played I with believe them. so we played with them and pat todd uh and the rank outsiders it was great but frank wasn't there well i hope you get to see frank again frank's yeah. a good guy man he is a good I, guy. I, I was in la last may and i hope to be back there this year sometime too like to go to LA once a year at least if yep. I can the rest of my life. <laughs> well, maybe uh, when you're out there, there will be a, a Motion Street Walk and Cheetahs show you can come out to. Man. Well, I hope to see <laughs> Hammered Saints soon because I'm really yeah. excited about the band. So March 11th, man. We're we're Kodo March 11th. March Kodo March 11th. Yeah. I love Salem. You could probably yeah. get me to go to Salem. Absolutely. Yeah, we're there with uh, Sly Fang and the Jack Lights, so that should be a good night, man. Nice. Hey, Kurt, thanks a lot, man, for coming on yeah. the show. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate it, man. All it's right, fun. we'll talk hey, soon. Cool. Good, thanks. Good deal, man. Bye.